Okay, hello everybody and happy new year. I'm Phoebe. I'm Phil. Um, and we are going to be talking today about uh, The Shadow of the Wind, right? That's the name of this book. <laughs> yes, by um, Carlos Ruiz. Uh, wow, That's wrong. I really should have his name up. Yeah, uh, it's Carlos Ru- Ruiz Zafron, like Efron, but Zafron. <laughs> And maybe, I mean, obviously he's Spanish, so I'm maybe butchering that. You'd have to tell me, Phil. Yeah. Um, so it's not like Zafron. It's Zaf- <laughs> <laughs> it's Zafon. So Z-A-F O oh. with a um emphasis and then N. So um, there's no R. No R. That's good to know for the Zafron, <laughs> just like <laughs> completely. <laughs> We're off to a great start. Nailed it. Um Oh okay. my gosh. Okay. Anyway, this was our uh first book. So with every book, um we are gonna go through a couple like preliminary things of just sort of uh basics, and then we'll sort of talk about the book um a little bit. Um so the first one is did you read or listen, uh Phoebe? Hey, did you say why you picked it, Phil? I was laughing too hard. Sorry, no, I picked it um, because it just actually got really good reviews on Goodreads and it was different from uh, something we've done. I think it was nominated for one of the Goodreads, like best books of the year in 2000 or something. It didn't win, but um, yeah. And then I checked it out um, and it sounded pretty good. Um, you're just like I am not interested at all in that synopsis but this one sounded cool yeah did it have anything to do with the fact that you speak Spanish and your fiance speaks Spanish and it was it was adapted into English right it was but I will say um I did send so Marion is really wants to and I I am fully on board with this but she wants to name our kids like uh latino or latina names um yeah. it's also we're super white so like without that they <laughs> might lose all their heritage um right and so i said well we've been brainstorming because it's hard for me too because i don't know that many but right. the, this book was helpful well i thought it was helpful so i sent I, for penelope um danielle or daniello actually which is in the nadia because uh-huh. no, it and she just replied i hate all of those so (laughs) well i also think those could be very quickly americanized right like penelope daniel like they would just immediately be yeah people picture them it would be like marion's name too like it's hard yeah you know daniello um but the o yeah you would see it but yeah penelope for sure um Anyway, so, but it was, I I do like all the names in this book and I liked that was something different. And I liked your point. Um, There's a character where they always refer to him as his full name. Um, But that's not even his name. That's like the name he assumed after he. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I loved him. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about that. That was so, that that was funny. And I want to get your take on like why you thought that was the case, but yeah, I listened and I listened in like a day. It was I don't know quick. how you did that. This book is 17 hours long. I um started the night before. Okay, so I would say like 1.3 days, but I wasn't yeah. gonna get that technical. But yeah, I am not doing anything right now. School hasn't started for me yet. So um, it was um it took me three full full days. Um so I just finished actually this morning. So do you think that was a commentary on if you were, because I kind of talk about this too, like it wasn't, it's categorized as a thriller, but I don't know if I would necessarily, no. it's definitely a thriller, but it, it it liked to be elongated. Like there was many um, backstories that kind of like you lost a little bit of interest and then gained intrigue. Yeah, it definitely wasn't one where I was just like, I was interested the entire time, but I wasn't like, uh, cliff no cliffhangers or like it what I would never describe it as a page turner I guess I, right. I do have pretty high standards for like a a page turner but some books um 
I don't know when you're reading them, you're just sort of uh, I'm trying to think of an example, but like when you're sort of just like breathless, the last like 40 pages, I, I don't right. think uh, like that in this. Oh, the, all of the um, the Corman strike ones are all like that. The last like right. of those books, you cannot stop reading them. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. This was not a page turner for me either, but I almost feel like it was intentionally that way because it was and I'll, I talked a little about this too, like everything was romanticized. It's in my opinion, that's very European. Like I know very limited things about European culture, but everything is just like very romanticized and very drawn out and explained. And it was beautiful. Like it was, I thought it was very beautiful. So maybe that was intentionally done on the, the um, part of the author. In my notes too, that um, it's, I don't know if it's just because it was written in a romantic language, but mm -hmm. it did seem very poetic. I felt this the same way, even with the translation of Madame Bovary um, by Gustave Flambert, uh, who, which is actually Gustave Flambert is mentioned in this um, audiobook when he goes to Paris. But anyway, it's written in French and I felt the same way. It's like very drawn out, uh, but very like poetically written. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also listened. Yeah, it took me four days. Um, and then we're also doing a sort of overall recommendation uh, where one is fine. Um, well, I guess we don't have a zero, but zero is just like not good. Uh, one is good. Nothing special. Two is would recommend to a friend. Very good. And then three is would read again. And I do want to say it's like it is like the Michelin system here where like two stars is really good because I don't reread books and Phoebe doesn't either. So a three star book is like very, very good. Uh, yeah. And especially with a thriller, like pretty hard to get a reread on that. Um, yeah. So mine is a two as well. Yeah, mine's a two. I mean, it, it's fabulous. I don't want to take anything away from it. I gave it a five on Goodreads. I just think that I probably wouldn't read it again. I mean, the, the ending is ruined for obviously like we read the book. So I think it was very beautiful, like maybe in 20 years as my memory starts to fade, which that's already happening, I would go back and read it. But I did recommend it to mom. Like I thought that would be, and I would recommend it to other people as well. So yeah, it's two. Um, okay, so if you like this book, you would like, this is an interesting wreck. Okay, but at the same time, you kind of just gave an example that I, yes. I also thought of. So I said The Silent Patient because that's really the only other like thriller thriller that I've gotten through and read and loved. Um, and we're actually planning on reading another book by the same author later this year when it comes out. Um, but I also said the Neapolitan novels by Elena Fr um, Ferrante. Ferrante. Um, because that's of the same that's thing. A good fact. Oh, okay. So that's the one I was like, this is nothing like it. I was just like, the silent patient is nothing like this one. But I mean, it is. But it's a thriller. <laughs> Plus, like, no one I know has that I've that's read the silent patient has, has not liked it. You know, that's like it's a really good book. Um, but agreed, like nothing like it really. And then the the Neapolitan novels, because of this very like drawn out, it's literally four huge novels about two friends that could have been like a singular novel most likely but it, you just get this same like feeling of like there's this word I can't put into place into like words that's more than not melancholy but it is this like drawn out it's, beautiful sprawling it's a magical realism is the genre uh and it's really? very, yeah so it's like really popular in latin america and both of well my first one is a hundred years of solitude by gabriel garcia marquez um just because it is magical realism and it's really the only one that i've like fully gone through in magical realism um in that i will say is like something i i think it's a really interesting blend of like gothic and magical realism because it's not it's not fully that um and i do have a couple of points about that but yeah it's like a very like in time and written like that uh and it's written as if it could be realistic but then like some things are just like a little bit off like this mm -hmm. like 
it, and this that. one actually turned well this one turned into like almost could have completely been real um besides uh, some sort of uh a little bit of like um like fortune telling about people's lives and like eventual fates but it started with like the cemetery of forgotten books mm-hmm. which i was like oh this is a like fictional sort of place but it was right. like it was a um but and then my other one is when you reach me um oh. they really Wait, oh, i thought that same thing i made a note of it okay go ahead I just think it's very similar to that book, um, but just very, I think that one's also a really, really good book. Um, and so I do think some t- something with similar vibes, but uh, yeah, those are my two. Very, that is so, in, I cannot wait to talk about this, but really quickly, let's talk about what we're currently reading and then we can go back to it. Um, so I just started Imager, um, which is a fantasy um, one. It's okay. I really just started it. I just finished Pariah by Anthony Ryan. Um, I really like Anthony Ryan. He wrote um, the Blood Song trilogy, and then it followed it up with the duology. Um, but it's the same set of characters in both. Um, is it uh, fantasy as well? Fantasy, yeah, a lot of knights and like. Uh, yeah we love that (laughs) actually you might like the series i'm reading right now i'm reading the dc icons if you haven't read it have you have you i can never you haven't read it yeah wow a book this is the day for the day i'm glad we got this on recording (laughs) it's a it's i think it's a five part series obviously of the dc comics but each book is written by a different author so the one I'm reading now is Wonder Woman. It was written by the same people who, the same woman who wrote um, Leah, it's Le- Leah Bardot, I think is her yeah. name. She wrote the Graveyard series that that we weren't super big fans of. Um, and then uh, the one I read like out of order, it, you don't have to read them in order, Catwoman who wrote um, the, uh, quote, the um, Rose of Corin, the oh, Court sorry. of Rose and Thorns. Yes, there, Damas. Yeah, thank you. Um, so like just all these like good authors, nice, basically cool. famous authors. Yeah, it's really good. I like it a lot. And it's an adaptation, I think, of um mo- the movies that have come out. I have I haven't looked into that, but like they they play a similar plot line to the DC movies, but obviously are way better because the DC movies. I was gonna say that might actually get me to watch. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, don't not read them because of that. Yeah um okay cool so let's um let's go into sort of our thoughts on um the book i did so you make a point here i wanted to talk about where you immediately guessed that it was uh carax that was like burning his own books yeah so i will admit that i'm like really bad at this like unless i'm reading a murder mystery where like it's very much like oh you should be thinking about who is doing this like i'm not like thinking ahead i did a little bit but like i actually thought it was the devil um i know that's good but like i thought because of this magical realism like yeah really expecting it to be and like when you reach me is like him in the future like that's a right. not, yeah like that's not a practical thing so i i thought it was sort of the devil or some like extra either that or like some hallucination of uh like that he was sort of conjuring of this guy who was going daniel on. was yeah. conjuring mm-hmm. yeah i agree i did not see that it was uh yeah. i thought that first and then the second interaction or the second like sighting i was like it's him later on yeah. And then I was like positive whenever they were, whenever he was like, get out at the bottom when they were in the house and they were with, he was with the tombs. Like, I, I knew. um, I, I do think I agree that it was, um, like going back with all the other writings was sometimes a little bit like, okay, this is going on a bit long. Um, but I did like sort of the cast of characters that they set up in the past. And I think that like, 
they were all really it was very interesting how he developed characters so far into the book like jorge right. um and also i loved i mean i do just think it was like the parallels that he set up between himself and daniela was like really really good awesome. like jorge was tomas um right. like this guy this evil guy was in both of their lives um so I, th I thought it was really good yeah I love that too and I it was like a third dimension because you had the present which was very I was most interested in the present then there was the past which I did think was drawn out but then became relevant because of the relationship with the four friends that all tied in definitely um but then you had this other element where um you're getting this parallel of the two together and you're kind of like piecing virtually honestly because I, the the parallel like i don't think it was super clear till the end um oh, i also thought that like after he visited um nardia or whatever her name was for the first time oh you thought it too yeah so I didn't because well it wasn't def it definitely wasn't clear till Beatrice um with Penelope yeah with those two um because like but, he, she, but Noria was like comparing them and then th in my mind it, you know yeah that makes sense um, um and then obviously with the pen like connecting them that was interesting too yeah that's cool so the when you reach me, the reason that I like freaked out when you said that is because at the beginning, when they go to the library of books or the cemetery of books, that that feeling that he got from getting that book where he it was this first time it was this first time feeling of getting a book. And that is the book when you reach me is that book for me in my childhood. So it I mean, I agree with you. I see the parallel, but then I also saw it in this other way because that was the first book that I, I remember you loving. That wow, book. I just loved that book. Sorry, the sun is like weird. Yeah. Um, no, that's yeah. super cool. Um, yeah. I don't think I had a book like that to be honest. Where I was just like, this book uh, is like my. I was always pretty into reading, like just because I was the third one. Uh, I right. think. Maybe like the Percy Jackson series. I mean, I still read those, um, but yeah, maybe those, but I didn't have that. That is that is really interesting for you though. Um, I like that. And that that book is so good. Um, yeah. For, um, oh yeah. Okay. Let's talk about Fermin Romero de, de Torres. Yes. <laughs> the man he, of the hour. <laughs> he was like such a fool. I really liked him, but... In the entire time, I feel like he was like, I could just hear Marion like reading this book and being like, this man is such an asshole to women. <laughs> <laughs> but then he actually wasn't really like, I mean, he wasn't, was. but then he was always like talking really poorly. Like vulgar, vulgar. <laughs> That's what I thought was actually really wild about this book. The immediacy to where it goes PG to R to back to PG was like really, really like abrupt. And I don't know if it was a translation thing or just the way of writing, but it was both in like sexual stuff where like it was not a sexual book at all. And then just like got really into the sex scenes where I thought that it was it was written in a in a way that I would think it would just sort of like pass them over like a TV show and then like show the end or something. Right. Right. It in. And then it also did it when he was like uh with um Pumero when he was like stabbing and he was like really explicitly like how he's gonna murder them. <laughs> not like I mean it was like I'll cut at you like and make you scream and then like it was just really and then it went back to like and I don't know, maybe it was because I was biased just because the reader was like such a good reader and like very pleasant. Good reader. Mm -hmm. And maybe like when he said unpleasant stuff, it was weird because he was like saying but I think that was the contrast of the like completely romantic, beautiful writing style. And then this like harsh, the harsh reality of what this kid was facing kind of. Yeah. Which it was really dark for like the whole time. Really yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I also said that too, though, where everything was so going back to like the romanticized and like very, not romanticized, but like sexual, like his yeah. first time meeting Noria, she was like going to kiss him, but she was very old and he was very young. It was this like weird, inappropriate dynamic that kind of happened throughout the book. Rico as well. Yeah. Right. So that was interesting. Um, I wanted to mention something else. Oh, I wanted to get your take on this because, oh yeah, the Don Federico thing. That was, that was also like something I was like, why is this even included? But then also, why is it so char Like, why is it so not sexually charged, but like, you know, triggering to someone who maybe has been assaulted or something like it was just. Yeah. Kind of scary, I thought. <laughs> it was sort of weird. Yeah. Uh, just in how in depth it went. I don't know. I mean, I didn't have a reasoning for it. Um, I do yeah. think it went off on. But he also did that. And maybe that one was just weird because of the subject matter, um, just like surprising because of the subject matter. But I feel like there were parts um, where, yeah, I, I think it's just the writing style where like he would just go off on tangents. Um, right. And it was sort of, I mean, it's like, I, it's very just Latin culture. Just I was like, going to say, it's very un-American. <laughs> there's some mosey about, but we'll get there eventually. Um, I love it. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about the dad. I was very surprised Crax's dad, like Julian's dad, um, because I was very surprised. Yeah, yeah, the Hatter or the, the Hatter. Exactly. I was very surprised that he helped Julian when he came back to the city after being in Paris. So oh, that, I, that threw me for a big curve and it did not follow at all in line with what the author had teed up. Well, I do think... Yeah, the author teed something up, and I think it was for me, um, De Torres, who said that, like, if everybody's speaking bad about that person, either he's a saint or everyone is a conspiracy against him. Yeah. And that line, one, didn't make any sense, because that's not my experience with people, usually, <laughs> when everyone's speaking bad about that person, like, that person sucks. They suck, Yeah. In this case, I do think that that was like the thing. I think that everyone sort of was in a conspiracy against this guy. And maybe he had. Um, but I mean, I, I do think that that's sort of like uh, he he had character development in the past that I think mirrored Danielle's father as well, where. Danielle's father seemed like pretty harsh and like didn't want Danielle to do anything and like mad that Danielle was getting over his mom. Um, and this guy, I think, in a different way, sort of lost everyone in his life and really just like became a nicer person. But also, I do think that there's a little sympathy in the turn of the book where like, this guy was raising a child that wasn't his and living with a wife who cheated on him with True. Him. like and, and so like you sort of see this like he had the right to be a little angry. Um, right. Yeah. Not like beat his wife angry, but like maybe no, but also like was that legit? Was that the, he was beating her? Yeah. I mean, it was just the neighbor that was just like that wasn't really that was a neighbor who's like and he was still in contact with his wife. It was hard. It was hard. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's kind of true. I never, I didn't think about that. It was definitely hard to tell whether or not like everything was made up about him, but it did turn out that he wasn't like a super bad guy, I guess. Yeah. Um. Wait, I was going to say something else that you had mentioned going on that. Um, oh, obviously the, the, the thing that I did not see coming was that Penelope was his sister. <laughs> Yeah, that was. Did yeah. you see that coming? No, I didn't. Um, not at all. And I didn't really realize. And that was maybe a little bit of, again, like, was a little bit of a redemption story. Of it was funny because nothing ever happened with, um, Danielle's father. Like he wasn't a character in the book. Like in the fact that like nothing happened in the present. But it was just uh, the amount of information that's revealed to you about his past did change him as a character from being a very evil person to being a person that was like 
maybe trying to prevent incest a little bit. Um, yeah. Wait, you mean, um, do you mean Penelope's? Um, no, I mean, Mr. Yeah. Aguilar. Or I'm no, no, he was, I think, a bad apple. Um, I yeah. was thinking about, um, Carax's father because oh yeah right yeah I mean he was I don't know if like his dad ever told him like our our kid my both my kids are hooking up right now but um <laughs> I mean maybe <laughs> yeah well the mom certainly knew obviously oh, right the mom yeah yeah but then then Julian died unknowing that he was in love with his sister yeah and you asked what the first letter was about I think it was basically yeah. Um, I think it was basically telling him that Penelope was not in a good state because he didn't know that he thought Penelope just abandoned him, but really right. being like kept in. So I think basically um, the friend Mikhail was like, he's going to come back here. If, if I don't write something. He knows that like Penelope is like being held hostage type deal right, right. Right with his kid. So that's why he changed the letter too. Yeah. So that was another thing about Mikkel that really, I mean, he was so loyal up and like literally gave his wife to. I thought he was going to be bad for sure. I thought he was going to switch sides. Same because I was like, this guy is raking you through the coals. You're funding his entire lifestyle, which he's a loser basically. <laughs> And my question, is he a good writer? Like, <laughs> were his books good? I honestly don't think so, because no one was buying them. Read them. But also, like, it obviously, like, enough people thought his books were good. Like, everyone who read that him were like, why? How isn't this guy selling? Yeah. But I, I mean, it's I think it's art, the art world where, you know, you could be brilliant and but it just never catches or you know yeah. it's not bad or whatever yeah. yeah um okay so let's get to our quotes which i do think that um this book had a lot of good quotes. good quotes agreed yeah. so yeah my, my first one is just because it really reminded me of the tolstoy quote of um there's or every happy family is alike, but every unhappy family is uh, unhappy in their own way. And it, mm. it, it it was very parallel to that. Whereas there are a few reasons for telling the truth, but for lying, the number is infinite. Um, and yeah. I, good. That's true. Yeah. Um, and then my second one was just because we are sort of a gift giving family um, of presents are made for the pleasure of who gives them, not the merits who receives them. Yeah, that was his dad about the pen, right? That yeah. was a great quote. Yeah. And then this one I just thought was really interesting, I guess. Most of us have the good or bad fortune of seeing our lives fall apart so slowly we barely notice. Um, Did Romero say or um, did Torres say that? So that was right before. Um, I think Nadia said it when she was writing about Julian, where she when he found the caskets. OK, I think it was near. It was very near the end, though. Yeah, she was an, a very interesting character. Um, so I liked their no dead languages, only dormant minds. I don't necessarily know that that's true, but I just like that it speaks to like the laziness of humankind. <laughs> you had uh, Gust Gustavo or was it Gustavo? He had Yeah, some. the bookseller. Yeah. Um, and then God gives us life, but the devil is the, la the world's landlord. I thought that was like just a cool saying. And very in line with the whole, um, what was the devil's name? Oh, um, I'm trying to look. I put out. I put a list of like who was who. Well, there. Uh, what do they call him now? It's completely. It's, I mean, it's something Spanish, so it it is sort yeah. of. Um. But yeah. The de it's de not de cabra. What was it? It'll it'll come to me later. something something <laughs> something that I just made up. 
Yeah, I loved it though. For, great first pick, Phil. Very good, very good pick. And also I like that it was about books, which I think is so. Yeah. so. Anyway, um, we will publish the series or the uh, list. The next couple of books. Um, and I hope that everyone um, reads along. And also yeah. if you like any of our books or don't like any of the books that we have picked, we haven't read any of them yet. So you can uh, give Let some. Let us know. All right. See you guys. Yeah. Next. yeah. And I want to read 500 books and I want to read 500